Today, I'm gonna to give you three tips on changing chords quickly. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Gareth. I'm a session musician, guitar teacher, and author of the book, Modern Guitar for Kids. And on this channel, we will explore anything and everything guitar related. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff to keep the channel growing. It's much appreciated. Practice tip number one is actually really simple. All it is, is focusing on the left hand alone. This has helped tons of my students to get their chord changes up to speed. All you need to do is set aside one or two minutes and just focus on this hand alone. We'll take a closer look now and I'll talk you through it as we go. All right, so let's focus on these chord changes. Let's take two chords that you find really troublesome. I mean, a common one is C to G because that one doesn't really have any connectors. Connectors are things that, like C to A minor, for example, you have two fingers that stay the same. So there's no need to move those fingers. But like a hard one would be C to G, where all your fingers have to move. And what I mean by focusing on the changes alone, it would be literally this. You're just gonna sit here, you can do this while watching Netflix, and just practice changing your fingers from one of those troublesome chords to the next. If you wanted to focus more on this, you could literally just set aside a minute, time yourself, and just do it. Just change like that. I know it seems like a simple concept, but trust me, you do this for one minute and that troublesome chord change should be a ton better by the time you're finished. All right, that was tip number one. Here's tip number two. I call it envisioning the chord shape. And if you're finding this video really helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers. Okay, so envisioning the chord shape. What I mean is that basically I want you to imagine little dots where your fingers will be placed. So if we're doing A minor, I can imagine a dot here. I can see in my mind's eye a dot here, here, and here. And I'm gonna try to put my fingers back on those dots as quickly as possible. And then if I imagine a C, I've got a dot here, here, and here, and off I go. Now this is very simple concept again, but what it's training your brain to do is to think ahead rather than reacting to the song you're trying to play you're thinking ahead of the next chord already so that's why that one's a really good practice tip again do this to it for a minute or two you could do this along with tip one to increase your practice results all right that was tip number two here's tip number three and all it is is moving your fingers all at once rather than doing what a lot of beginners do and putting their fingers down one at a time this might seem obvious to some of you, but this is actually quite a common thing when learning guitar for a lot of my students. So lastly, tip number three, instead of moving each finger individually, try moving all fingers simultaneously when transitioning between the chords. This approach may feel counterintuitive at first, but it can significantly speed up your chord changes and improve overall fluidity. By coordinating the movement of all fingers together, you reduce the chances of stumbling during transitions and achieve a more cohesive sound. You can also combine this with tip number two by visualizing the chord shapes first, thinking ahead, and practice this by going, let's do an A minor, I've got my visualization of there, those three fingers, and go, you just throw your fingers down, straight onto that A minor, let's do a C, visualize that C, and bang. This will increase your speed when you change chords. And that's really what we're here for, right? Okay, so I've got an extra tip for you today. Um, it's basically using one of these. This is a metronome, okay? This one's called Soundbrenner. All right, I'd bring it in so you can see it a bit better. I'm doing it at 90 BPM. The idea here is that on every high pitch click, I will be having to change. I have to change to a chord on that high pitch click. Okay, um, this is really good because it forces your hand. Okay, a lot of kids, when a lot of beginners, when they're doing this, these chord changes, they wait for their hand to be in place. Well, that's not what you want to do. Your hand needs to catch up to the time of the song or whatever your chord progression you're doing. So I'm going to do a little bit of practice with you now. I'm going to do C to G because um, that's one of the harder ones, and I'll also do C to A minor because that's an easy one. Uh, let's do C to G first. So remember, I'm going to, on every high pitch click, I change to my chord. Make sure that you stay with me, ready? So C first. Two. Cool. 
If that's too hard or too easy, speed it up, slow it down, whatever. Make it appropriate for your level of ability. But remember to also push yourself because you want it to intimidate you a little bit. You want to progress, so push yourself, okay? Let's do an easy one, and I'm going to turn it up actually to 110. Uh, let's do C to A minor. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Oh, let's do that again. Here we go. One, two, three, four. actually a f another tip, a fifth or sixth tip, I forget how many tips I've given you today, but there's another one here, and the reason why I haven't mentioned it, it doesn't actually work with every chord we're doing, but um, there are some chords, like C to A minor, that have these um, connectors, if you will, and that is the fingers that don't need to move. A lot of kids and a lot of beginners will go C, then move, take their whole hand off and go A minor, and then go back to C, and it's ridiculous, you don't need to do this, there's two fingers, that just stay still. There's a bunch of these. There's another good one, um, A minor to E. Yes, your, all your fingers move, but the shape stays the same. Um, C to F is really good because two fingers move down like that, but your first finger stays chill. And there's a, there's a bunch of other ones, like C add nine to G. That's a really good one to practice your G. Okay, so there's loads of connectors and it's your job to find them, all right? So that's three tips plus two more and a practice routines all over the chip shop. Hope you enjoyed that. All right, guys, that was tip number three. That's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Leave a comment if you found it helpful or if there's something new you want to explore with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.